James chapter 1. And I'm going to get to my text this morning. If you'll stand. James chapter 1. And verse 22. And Brother Justin kind of set the groundwork this morning. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and he goeth his way, and straightway forgetting what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Now let's just lift our hands this morning and let's worship the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Sometimes we stand before the mirror just to look at ourselves. Sometimes we uh, ignore the mirror. And I can remember in days before there were really not mirrors for individuals to purchase and they would uh, do would use whatever kind of object they could to get a glimpse or reflection. And that's where the term looking glass uh, came in to play. They, they would look into the glass to see if they get a, a reflection of what they themselves look like. And the more costly the, the looking glass, the better image you portray, or uh, the better it portrays you. The, the more that you can see your distinct features, uh, whether you've uh, shaven or whether you have spinach stuck between your teeth or if you've washed your eyes out. I mean, some of these looking glasses you can look very well in or not so well. But in some of the old days, pioneering days, they would just find a, a reflecting pool so some has called it. Or find a creek if the light would shine just right that they could look down into and see their reflection. But those reflections don't give a, a grand appearance, just a general appearance of what we look like. Yes, 
you know, our hair's a little messy, and that's what my grandmother used to say, your hair's a little messy. Messy. You know, go comb your hair. I can't see the mirror, Grandma. Well, get the comb and I'll comb your hair. And then you have one of those little twigs that decide to stick up, and then she gave you a lick bath. I'm trying to get it stuck. She wanted to make sure that I was presentable, whether I was just going to go out and play in the cornfield. I always had corn growing, and I'd love to go out and play in those corn rows until the one day I saw a great big spider like this thing, and, and it was so ugly. And it's, it had two beady eyes, and that's the only thing I can really remember about that ugly thing. When I saw him, and those two beady eyes staring at me, it's like, oh, I'm getting out here. <laughs> But we, if we're not careful, we look into the looking glass and we think we're looking good or we, we, we look okay or we look just right. Or we can look into the glass and we can see in the mirror that we've got grease marks and we've got a little uh, dirt around the neck or the collar and, and, and it, we turn right around and forget what we look like. We see that the writer here, James, is talking about people that they know the word and they can be proud doers of the word only for a moment because they have short-term doing. It's called ADD. People have spiritual ADD. Oh, they can get hyped up about working for God or knocking on the neighbor's door or witnessing and testifying until they walk outside the church doors. Uh, we was in a conference once and, and uh, he was talking about sharing the word, carrying gospel tracts, and, and uh, their, the person that was illustrating this was dressed and uh, as they begin to go through this illustration, you know, she had this little coat on and she opened the coat up and all these tracks pile out. And before she walked off the, the, the platform, I mean, she was just one walking track. But it was the idea that there's little things that we can do to be a witness. So many of us, we are the undercover silent secret witness you know I, I, i'm a believer in jesus but don't dare ask me yeah don't don't don't, let, don't make me talk about my faith uh, i'm shy and i'm bashful and i stutter a lot and i just it's not about making excuses but we see the, these individuals that that James was addressing, they soaked it up here. They had it in their head, but it was never transferred to their heart. Think about how much information you have in your head this morning. Until you try to recall it, I forgot, I can't remember. Or you're, you were, you wrote something down at home and, and uh, you left the house without your grocery list, but I know what it is. It's just three simple things that I need from the store. And you get to the store and you can't even think what those three things are. You can remember everything else that you really don't need that you might as well go ahead and pick up while you're there, just in case you're getting low on. But I know there's three specific things I need that we're out of. So you walk the whole basis of all these, or Walmart, or Target, or Kroger's, or thinking that something will trigger what those three items were. Yesterday morning, I was going to get up early so I could shave and go to work and but I decided to few, sleep in a few extra minutes and the next thing I know it was too late just enough time to jump in the shower but 
But I looked in the mirror, and I didn't think I looked that bad. Well, th this was at 6.45. At 9 o'clock, I stopped by the restroom, washed my hands, and guess what? There's two mirrors hanging on the wall, and I happened to bless at the one, and, and I thought, is that really me? And I went to the mirror, and I looked a whole lot worse than I thought I looked at 6, 5.45, 4 to 6. It's like, how did all this ugly stuff grow up in just two short hours? Because, see, at 5.45, I didn't think I looked that bad. But it's amazing what happened when I left the, the restroom and got dressed and left. And I forgot what I saw in the mirror, or what I thought I saw in the mirror. But guess what? Those people that have to work around me, they saw it all the time. I thought I looked okay. And yet, we today, we think that we're doing okay. You know, we know what the Bible says, and we have a few memory verses, or uh, maybe part memory verses memorized. Uh, we, we know the, the beginning and the end, anyway. It starts with the and ends with amen. Or at least we have one scripture verse that we can we know for sure. Maybe we don't remember where it's at, but uh, we we know what it says. Jesus wept. We got that one down. Uh, let's see. Uh, in the beginning, God. Well, let's see what's the rest of that. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Oh, we can jump over to John 1 and 1 and we may get that right if we remember which three letters go in order. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, God. Oh, hallelujah. You know, we, have, we can get part of these things down in our head, but they're really not in our hearts. When it isn't transferred from the thinking process to the acting process of being the doer of the word. The doer is not out there, one necessarily, the knocking the door, beating the, the sidewalk, handing out the tracks, but being just a doer of the word. That means one that is living, living by the word who is living in the Word. See, there is, there is a difference between the, the active and the passive. Or the passive-active. You can't be passive-active or pass, active-passive. You, you are either one or the other. You are like you, you just said, here or only. Well, you that are, are not just hearers, but you're also Doers. In the uh, New Living Version, it says, Anyone who hears the word of God and does not obey is like a man looking at his face in a mirror. There are a lot of people this morning that are sitting in churches that are hearing a word from the Lord. But it's just like James who says that they do not obey the word. They hear it, but they refuse to obey it. There are several reasons why people don't obey the word. Because that's not the way I was taught. Well, I, that's not what my Bible says. How many times have I heard that argument? Well, just get out your Bible and see what your Bible does say. Because most people that I say that they're born again Christians, they have something about that King James trans, uh, the tr King James version that was translated in 1611. 
something about holding on to the word, not changing the word. So we're going to stay in the 1611 translation. Okay, let's get your Bible out and let's see what it says. Isn't it amazing when the word is open and they read it for themselves from their word? And it says the same thing that my King James Version 1611 translation says. Now, I like to look at the other translations. Sometimes other translations or, or transliterations give a clear meaning. As long as it does not change the word. There are some translations out there or paraphrased words out there. They do change the meaning of the, the, the statement, that whether what Christ said or what the apostles uh, preached or taught or the letters to the churches. And that's what we have to be aware of. But when we begin to look at different versions to give a clearer meaning so that we're able to stay in the Word, to live the Word, I don't want to ignore what I look like spiritually. Yes, I can choose to ignore what I look like naturally. And, and if I was out looking for a job, if I was out putting out a resume, I would make sure that I beheld myself in the mirror and that I took care of some things. Because when a, a potential employer is out to employ, they want someone who's going to make their company look good. Now they may not, you may not think about someone that's a sewer digger when he look good. But if they have an advertisement of being the best sewer company, guess what? They don't want just anybody showing up on the job. They want someone that looks like they know what they're doing. Now, they may get dirty before they get out of the hole. They may be covered with a lot of sewage before they get out. But if, if they come to your home, you want to make sure they look like they've got it together. And yet, we see that so many individuals, they become the hearer of the Word of God, but they refuse to obey the Word. It says in this translation of the NLV, it states that even after he sees himself, what does he do? He goes away. He forgets what he looks like. And when, when I read the, this again this morning from the NLV, I thought, this ex is exactly me as I was yesterday. Because I looked at myself and immediately when I stepped out of the bathroom, I forgot what I looked like. I don't carry a little 4x4 four four mirror with me just to say, oh, wow. Pastor Ron, you look good. Nor do I stand in front of the mirror and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of, or who's the best rookie of them all? Because regretfully, it might say, not you, not you, not you. And then it hurt my pride for sure. Then in verse 25, it says, but the one who keeps looking into God's perfect law and does not forget it will do what it says and be happy as he does it. And it's like, wow. Look at how many unhappy Christians there are in this world. Now, Christians ought to be the happiest or the most happiest people in all the, of the earth. All around the world when you run into somebody and say, Woo, are you a Christian? They say, yes. What's wrong? I mean, you know, everybody can have a bad day. But even at our, I know this is not proper, even at our baddest, it's the goodest day that any goodest person could have. Even at our worst, it's still a good day. 
when we have so many bad day Christians, what's wrong with their walk? Are they the baddest Christians because they're only hearers? They only hear the word and they forget what they heard? Do they forget it because they are lacking in some of their memory skills or is it they have selective hearing? And it was something they really didn't hear. How many times have you heard something without really hearing something? I told you. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I just got that telling. I didn't hear you. Some of, sometimes our children growing up, you call their name and they answer and then you tell them to come and, and then they don't come. It's like, well, did you not hear me call your name? Yes. Well, how come you didn't come when I called you? Well, I didn't know you wanted me to come. Or I didn't hear that part. Selective hearing. But I understand what makes a happy Christian a happy Christian. And it's not just because they've been born again of the water and the spirit. But that should be the joy that comes into our life. But what makes us happy on a continual basis? Oh yes, I've got Jesus in my heart, but that should make me happy. But what makes me ha happy is when I keep looking into the perfect law of God. And I don't forget it. What makes me happy is when I learn that when I'm into the Word, I don't have time to be into the horrible scope. I don't have to be I don't have to be into Annie's mailbox. When I'm into the Word, I don't have to try to find out who can I judge my life by today that I won't look as bad as them. That's what the Pharisee did. He had to judge his standards against what? A poor publican. Oh God, I know that I'm not as bad as him. And the little publican over there on his face, smiting on his chest, crying out to God to forgive me, a sinner. And yet this guy, oh, I'm thankful I'm not. Guess what? They're both sinners. One look maybe a little prettier than the other. But in, in God's eyes, was it the, the headpiece? Was it the robe with all those fancy ornaments on it? Is that what God's going to look at? Or is he going to look at someone that's maybe has dirty clothes, or tattered clothes, and maybe he's not the best suited individual? But when he hears a sinner call out, God, forgive me a sinner, who is he going to pay attention to? When we walk in the law of the Lord, who is he going to give greater credence to? Who is he going to look to and say, there is a man, there is a woman who is not just being a hearer, but is a doer. The psalmist David said, you have ordered my steps in your word. So how do we know which way to go today if we have not cracked the word? If we have not been into the Word, well, let's see, well, this is Sunday morning, and I won't have to worry about being in the Word, because when we get to church, Pastor Ron or Pastor John or someone is going to give us the Word. So and they're going to tell us what Word to go to in the Word. And when we get to the Word and into the Word, that they'll be giving us enough words. So why would I have to be in the Word? The same habit we build on Sunday is the same habit that carries over on Monday. Well, let's see, I know it's 5 o'clock and we're a little bit late, uh, and maybe I catch the word later. So we jump in our automobile, we have our radio station set, so we're hearing some ungodly music, that's the word for us today. Or some of us, we may have it set on another you know, station that we're getting some other person's word even though they're taking it from the Word. Or let's see, I don't, want to, I don't care for any of those preachers, so I'm just popping my favorite preacher in the CD or the, if you still have cassettes or A-tracks. 
pop it in so we can get a word from the Lord. But those, I'm not, you know, demeaning the word, whether it's tapes, CD, DVD, but you lessen your ability in your walk when you're not in the word for yourself. There are times that I have been inspired and there's times that God has lifted me up because I've heard someone else deliver a word. There are times that I've received a certain revelation on something that I should do or something I shouldn't do or preparing me for something that I didn't know was coming ahead. And sometimes I've had to pop that word back in just to hear what was ministered to me because I'm in this situation. But there are times when I'm sitting in my office or at home and it's just being Jesus and the Word. It's amazing how God wants to speak to us. And people say, oh, God doesn't speak to people anymore. But He does. But guess what? We have too many things out here that clutter our minds. We have too many things that's vying for our attention that we don't take time just to do the thing, Sister Clark, of shutting the door and then locking it. Turning the lights out. Finding that secret closet or that secret space where you can be shut in with God and then allow the looking glass begin to examine what we need and what we ought to see. Oh, I wish I was Mark the perfect man. Well, that's what Proverbs says, Mark the perfect man. No, there is not a perfect individual on the face of the earth today. And there was only one and they killed him. So guess what? If you become perfect, they're going to kill you too. But I'm so glad that when we look into the Word, into God's perfect law, and when we choose not to forget it and do what it says, we will be happy. Oh, hallelujah. Anyone that follows in obedience are happy people. I have seen Lady Clara be so happy when she's obedient. But I've seen her being so unhappy when she's disobedient. How much is that like us as born-again Christians? We are happy in Jesus when, he, when we're doing everything He says we're doing until He says to do something else and we don't like it. Then we become unhappy. But, but the Word of God makes men free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In James, in the King James, it says, But a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. I found a song, and I was going to try to click on to see what it even sounded like. But the words are very true. Of so many today that are hearers only. The, the, the song's title is Looking Glass. Tell me where I'm going. Tell me where I'm bound. Turn the pages over. Turn the world around. Open up the broken door for all lost will be found. Walk into the empty room, but never make a sound. Oh, tell me, where am I going? Tell me why I'm bound to tear the pages open. Turn the world around. I've seen everybody. Everybody's seen me. In the looking glass, I'm in everybody. Everybody in me. The stone is cast. The glass is smashed. You know, there are 
individuals that are so into the looking glass and they don't know where they're going. They're confused. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 40, Peter said, save yourself from this untoward generation. A generation that does not know where they're going. And many are clueless about any direction at all. So they stand looking all around themselves and what should I do? So it says, no one is there telling me, and I'm not going to listen to them anyway, telling me what I should do, tell me what to do. So I'm going to just stand here and do nothing. And so many of so-called Christians are standing doing nothing. But God has called us not to be hearers only, but to be doers of the word. And in closing this morning, in Psalm 1, oh, Psalm 1 and verse 1 and 2 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Woo, hallelujah. Now, when we look at the law of the Lord, and a lot of people want to buck against the law of the Lord, but we can find that this is where it makes us the happiest. We can say, yes, we have the Lord on our side. We have the Lord in our heart. But guess what? Are you walking in the law of the Lord? Are you walking in the law of the Lord? And that's what is important. And the psalmist David said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the, his law doth he meditate day and night. Psalm 19 and verse 7. The law is of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Psalm 119 verse 1 says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want to be truly happy, get out the looking glass. Get into the looking glass. And just don't be a hearer only kind of person. But be one who can look into the looking glass to look at your spiritual appearance, your spiritual countenance, and let it look inside your heart. And then walk in the law of the Lord. Because in the law of the Lord, there is liberty. And in the liberty that Christ gives, makes us free. Oh, hallelujah. Let's all stand this morning. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we love you this morning. So sweet. To trust in Jesus. To trust in Jesus. Just to take him. Just to his very words. Just to rest. Just to rest. Upon his promise. Upon his promise.